Hi everyone and welcome to the Shotokan Chronicles. We're going to continue on with our series on Nakayama's legacy and we will watch the Kata Kankudai. But first, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our videos. The Shotokan Chronicles have partnered with The Great North Apparel. Go to thegreatnorth.net and check out their merchandise there. They have some great uh, some great products, t-shirts, uh, swimwear, and and workout clothing as well. And um, you can get 30% off of your purchase by using the coupon code SHOTOKAN at checkout. Also go to the Shotokan Chronicles uh, shop. Uh, the link will be in the description below where you can purchase your very own the Shotokan Chronicles merchandise. Uh, t-shirts, hats, hoodies, sweaters, um, tote bags, uh, I believe there's cell phone cases, and so much more with this uh, design, as well as another design that's specially made for the ladies. So, Kanku Katas are important to the history of, of Karate in general. Kanku is named after a Chinese emissary who traveled to Okinawa and is and has been credited with being one of the many people that introduced Chinese Kung Fu to Okinawans, which in turn became known as Tore and then Karate. So, Kanku Dai, Kanku Sho in Chotokan, and Kushan Kun in different styles of, of Karate separate from Shotokan are all in honor of Kushan Kun. And to find out more about Kushan Kun, I did a video and I'll put the link to that up above. So this is a pretty long video. It's roughly 20 minutes. So let's get into it. So this video is, is fairly long. It's, it's about 20 minutes long. Um, some parts of it is stylized where they're performing on a beach. If you, if you want to fast forward to the more um, technical aspects of the video go ahead but I will be giving some of my commentary throughout so if you want to listen to my thoughts on the kata you might want to just stay tuned and, and and watch through the video. Without any further ado, Kankudai. Some people are going to say that these stylized versions are silly. I personally like watching some of the stylized stuff, almost like a music video. Now, I, ha I had to remove the music, copyright, but uh, if, you ever ha if you have your own copy of this or if you've ever seen uh, with the music, it is, it is pretty good. There's a few things there. Shuto, now, you, instead of having your hand out here, this is an older version. Always reach now. Also, when you come up here, you're not supposed to move your feet together. You're supposed to stay in that horse stance position. So when you come up to do your punch block, you're not supposed to shift up and like bring your feet closer together. Just straighten your knees. And that is um, from Best Karate. It's like the fisherman might fall, fall in the water. <laughs> When I do the second fist, I usually use both hands, so I get a nice strong wind-up and make it a stronger technique. Also, when I do the scoop, I usually don't bend my head, keep my, my face up. 
so I can see my opponent. Moving textbook series number five, Kanku. Demonstrator is Akishito Isaka, instructor of the Japan Karate Association, Dokudan. Individual Kumite semi-finalist and individual Kata third place at the 16th All Japan Karate Do Championship Tournament, in addition to several honors. In cooperation with members of the Japan Karate Association headquarters, Just making a triangle, your right thumb over your left thumb, right forefinger over the, the right forefinger, and don't bend the fingers down, keep them flat, coming up from the groin up. Now some people bring it way back and around, just coming up. When you get to eye level, look up through, and then break open and come around. You don't need to come back like this. You're actually putting tension on your shoulders doing that, and it doesn't actually um, help you perform any techniques better if you're being attacked. You're not going to reach way back behind you because now you're putting yourself in a compromising position. As I mentioned, when I do my back fist there, my hammer fist, sorry, I, I use both hands winding up. Kanku is one of the longest kata or styles in karate. It consists of 65 movements and teaches one how to contend with many opponents at one time. The beginning movement of both hands describing a circle shows one is not armed and also represents the universe. Kanku and Bassai are representative kata of Shotokan. Bassai is performed with composure, while in Kanku, three major points of kata must be fully expressed. The correct use of power, swiftness or slowness in executing techniques, and the stretching and contracting of muscles. Also, as Kanku uses the basic techniques learned through Heian Yodan, it's important to thoroughly master Heian Yodan. important not to do a half step here, as in Heian uh, Yondan. Don't think of this as a blocking motion. It's coming 
I've always done it up above my head and down. Some people I've seen go and bring their shoulder here and use it like a block. It should be like a strike. movement here where you do your uki above your head a lot of people and in this video as well they're shifting their feet together to help them get up but if you look at Anku the text the ink with the opening of a circle and end with closing the circle in the same rhythm if you look at the text in the book when it comes to that point it says do not move your feet so you're not supposed to bring your feet together, you're supposed to keep them planted, straighten your knees to get your heart. You notice there, he didn't come up above his head and out wide, he just came up in front. Doing this, make sure your palm up when you're down and not let your shake into the same. Very important. Now the double kick is difficult to do to get both kicks up. If you just bring the knee up for the first one and then kick, that's okay. But if you can do both kicks, that's better. When doing kata, embusen, which means direction, and unsoku, which is footwork, are very important. Carefully observe how the feet move. And when practicing, Check the relationship with the techniques. One of my favorite katas. The structure of kata consists of actual fighting experience. Understand the meaning of each technique. And a lot of people don't understand that. They think that kata is just ritualistic. It's actually fighting techniques but we're not doing them at full speed or full power. You're doing those fighting techniques in a way so your body knows how to do them. So your body understands the movement. And then you elaborate them to make them more realistic and more effective. And as always, the application that is shown here is very basic. Um, 
there are different things that can be applied, different things that work, different things that don't work. But when you see something, don't say that's not going to work because what you might be seeing is not being presented in a way that may be effective or you may not realize that what is being presented is not the actual concept of the technique. And what I mean by that is everything that's a block can also be a strike. Anything that's a turn or can be a throw, you have to understand the duality of technique. And in that sequence, four blocks, five blocks against five different people, you're not going to block, 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 because that person that you just blocked is going to attack again. And when I get to the situation where I'm able to do some Unkai, I'll show you how that's actually blocking a strike with each Shuto technique. I learned Kung Fu uh, many years ago and I learned it to, um, to music. The, the song that we were using was called Je T'aime and it's a French song. Um, I can't remember the name of the people that perform it. But uh, the beat and the rhythm to it. If you get the version without the lyrics, because the lyrics are a little on the R rated side. You get the version that's just the music and the, the beat. With each beat, you make a motion. The tempo of the kata is just a little skewed, but it works really well and it helped me to remember the kata. Now, on one of my personal channels, I think I have a video of myself doing it, but it's not really that good. a link to it, I'll post it, but it's not a very good kata that, um, that I perform in, the, in, the, in that video. Always with this series, I know it is. Um, it's an older video. Uh, the Nakayama Legacy, the Japan Karate Association, put this out many years ago, um, before Master Nakayama passed away, or I believe just just after. And the series of videos show so much of the katas that are so important to Shotokan. Now. These are, are really hard to find today, and um, it's a true treasure, especially to people that practice Shotokan. If you don't have these videos, um, look for them, see if you can find them. They're a great resource. Now, there are some things that may have altered or changed, and remember, my, um, my uh, ideas, my input on, on what to do in these kata is from the organization that I'm part of and how things are being standardized in our group. Uh, other organizations and different Shotokan groups are going to do things slightly differently. So take what you need to take from what I'm suggesting that works or that you're, that you're doing and then throw away what's not work or what's not part of it. While reversing direction, raise the knee high, 
raised both hands sliding up from either side or the right side, attack the face and solar plexus and quickly lower body to avoid the stick. Swing down the left hand from overhead. Block opponent kick with little finger side of wrist. The right hand is lowered in a straight line to strike at the leg. Rotate body with both hands crossed overhead. At the same time, lower and tighten both elbows. Master Nakino must count there is the actual tempo of this cup. Demonstrators, Fujikyo Omura, instructor of the Japan Karate Association, Yodan. Minoru Kawawada, instructor, Yodan. Akira Fukami, instructor, right. Yodan. There you have Konkudai. As I mentioned, probably one of the more historical katas, an important kata when it comes to understanding all of the basic kata. Now, it has parts of Basai Dai, it has parts that are similar to Heian Yondan, it has parts similar to Heian Niran as well. So but there, and, and there's parts in this kata that you can see in the Heian katas. Now, I always ask my students which came first, Heian's or Kanku, and it's pretty obvious. The Heian katas were created in the early 1900s by Itotsu Sensei for the elementary school system. Kushankun or Kanku came much, much earlier. Great, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Train hard. See you next time right here on the Shotokan Chronicles.